Uh, do we need to take um, attendance because we have two Zoomers? I think we got it. No, okay, yeah. you got it. Excellent. Okay. Very good. And the right. minutes, I do need to, I'm a little behind those. So I have the draft of the 13th that Katie sent me. And just going through Tim's ones from January. Just so we we'll do it. I'll have it all ready for next meeting. Uh, so for, for a vote, vote, yeah, a real yeah. vote. We'll press pause on the uh, yeah. meeting minutes. If you see anything on this draft, let me know. Um, I have notes, and I think so. You've got notes too. So, um, so the packet is inside that whole brochure. So really, I did include the and. To give you anything else, I did. I did add the um, for the town project update. I did add the the I guess the overlay of the tennis courts yeah. that and they're surveying tomorrow. Um, yeah. So the the tennis court project is going is going first. <clears throat> so that's in process starting and and you know as we were so. Bunch of things. Um, I would have thought that this would have been taken care of earlier, and you know, kind of as soon as spring hit, this would all be taken, you know, all taken care of. But <clears throat> apparently, the the surveyors are three weeks behind, and eh, blah, 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 you know, everybody's backed up, and this and this. So um, there's no in actual lunch? no, not at all. But there's no there's no actual time frame that we can point to as to okay, we are going to start construction on this day. <laughs> what they're doing starting tomorrow is. Drilling holes looks like um, uh, six, nine, ten, eleven. Nine and two is eleven. Eleven holes up at the uh, to do like a geo survey of what kind of bedrock is underneath the courts, so they know what they're dealing with when they're going to reconstruct them. Um, and that takes a period of time because they have to see about. I don't. I don't. I'm not a civil engineer, so I don't know. But I think it has to do with like the settling and the moving of rocks and, and dirt and fill and what have you. Trees. So the they, trees under there. There probably are trees. <laughs> um, there are. So there's so there's that. So so I don't uh, we I don't think, and maybe Ted, you might have better information, but I don't think we have a time frame on this. We don't actually know when this is when this is going to take place. We know when the drilling is taking place, but we don't know anything happening. The surveying is being done. I think they were just notifying Derek. I don't know if they actually have notified you to say surveying is being done this week or next week, just the, the survey around the neighbor, around the um well, the butters, including you. No, I, I I never got anything, and I haven't heard from any of my neighbors that they've gotten anything either. But I mean, I I've seen the folks. Uh, I know there were surveyors out there before, and I saw them cutting back trees. Um, I, I'm curious if they if they drill, is are they so are they going to shut down the tennis courts for a little while? Or are they filling those holes right back up? Are people still going to be u able to use them because they put the nets up? Yeah, the nets are up, and then they're, they're just going to, well, I didn't realize we're going 10 feet down, but it says it right here. But they're going to fill them with cement, and they'll be, and if you look at the uh, where the holes are now compared to the existing courts, for those that, you know, Allison, you can't see it, but the, uh, the, the diagram here with the existing courts, the holes are not on the courts, on the courts thankfully. Um, they didn't, and I, they do know the tennis charts on Monday. Um, so that's one reason why they had to get in there right away. Um, the other, the other question I have, um, sorry to interrupt that, that, uh, the drawing you said over had, um, a couple pickleball courts on it. Are those happening? Well, I think they putting it out to bid and I don't know if they, they're going to do itemized building on this and. Concrete versus asphalt. Yeah, so that's what they're doing. Is they're actually taking bids on all these things to see what they get back for numbers, and then figuring out what we have in the budget to cover whatever uh, people's you know people's bids are. So, if if it can be done cheaply with two pickleball courts, or uh, I guess within budget, and there's two pickleball courts, and there'll be two pickleball courts. If not, there won't be. So, but they're going to do you, do you, does anybody have any insight as to, I, I mean, I know there was some debate about um, maybe some misrepresentation of what the surface might be, whether it's concrete or asphalt. Have we, have we come to any conclusion on, on what direction we're headed within our budget that was proposed? 
Well, that's that's part of it. So that's mm -hmm. part of the bid process is, is, hey, tell us what your price is for concrete. Tell us what your price is for asphalt to each of the vendors. So we'll we'll know once they yeah once they send once we hear back from them we'll know um, kind of what which where we're gonna go with it. Did the town ever look for the tennis courts uh, for pickleball? The ones up at the thing. I don't know where. They thought it was a great idea. I brought up, but then they never followed up on that. What that? You have anything? The indoor tennis courts. I said put two pickleballs in there. You get all the old parts in there already. Yeah, yeah, it was up on Cedar Street. Cedar right as you start. Yeah, it was the tennis. Right inside. Right. 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 You never been in there. No, and I don't think that's. Uh, and she's not 400 years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you get this little part playing uh, pickleball, not gonna lie. <laughs> no, you're going up it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a nice plan. I mean, they do have the um, little dugout in between the, the six courts. Mm -hmm. they, I just actually noticed the fencing, the, uh, the backside fencing. Uh, and then they also have the hopefully that bat last gate there. We get have the kids get to school, um, right that corner, that little one little corner. I don't know if that's a gate there or not, but this actually doesn't look like it opens up. But I think those are stairs the far side, the yeah. little yeah. Well, I mean, over yeah, actually, I'm talking like uh, at this, this little nook here, that's where that path would be for the kids yeah. to get to school. Yeah, that's a good point. Doesn't yeah. look like it's open. Um, yeah. I included a couple of emails just for um let's have I share with you where there were the cost to survey each bet. She didn't okay. She as you know, she didn't say anything about the um, the one K for the basketball court, uh, to survey the basketball court for to help you do that project. But she did okay the 59 for the Mulligan. In that email that look. when he's proposed for it, how far in are they going? Well, it goes into it's where way. the path is now. It's this the path is being hanged away in the woods. Uh, I don't know. There's a little bit of woods there, it's a little flat. Um, there'll be some excavation there because I don't know how flat that is right there. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, that's that. Section along there had all the trees. Mm -hmm. Build it up. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think of other projects you see. Uh, I mean, I do have notes in here about the shed. Um, Beachwood, I think we, we saw them surveying the playground. Uh, uh, yeah, but I'm not sure what that was, uh, actually. So they are going to need to survey, I'm assuming. That was, that was that guy. That, Mark that, was, their that guy? was their guy, yeah. Okay. You're supposed to come to Story Street. They're supposed to let me know, but they didn't. Okay. I didn't see them. All right, great. That's good news. Yeah. Get that out of the way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So Beachwood will will follow. Uh, presumably, uh, I, I mean, we have the money. Um, I guess. Uh, well, I, I, let's back up. Uh, Ted and I were on a meeting with the people from Activitas and with Michelle Leary, and one of the things that they all agreed to was to include, and, and it's a great idea with, with, with parameters, uh, to include the community in the um, layout of the playground, which sounds great, right? Because you want to get the kids to get involved and say, oh, I love this slide, I love that slide. And you know, my only my only misgiving or or kind of like uh, red flag, possible red flag was if you let it drag on and it turns into no, I want this. No, I want that. And it just turns into a six month deal. You know, I I was hoping that was not going to be the case. And they all they all agreed that no, it was going to be a very, you know, quick, succinct process with like, okay, hey, here are your choices. What do you like? Okay, great. The number biggest number of votes came for that, that, and that. That's what we're going to go with. Um, so okay, NFL free agency, the NFL free agency. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Very, very cut and dry versus like letting it be open ended. So they that that is so so I, I started off by saying oh uh, I'm presuming that Beachwood will be right behind Milliken that's not a guarantee because I don't know how long that process is going to take um, but it's it's soon thereafter right. is what is the way everybody agreed and the cross ball they the only thing we asked for them to wait till after camp's over so um, that's going to probably be pushed to September right. post summer camp. Yeah. 
And I'll, you know, so the next step is that, you know, the spring field matrix is the next on your list um, in your file. So, you know, Tim and I met with lacrosse and soccer because there was a couple of conflicts. Um, just to let you guys know, I mean, I talked to Jeremy say get asked for an update on everything. Um, so he gave me an update. Page right behind here is sort of a little, um, little update halfway down the um, building update. It's all insulated and painted. In, it was actually yes today insulated and painted inside. The kitchen side is heated. The floors are in this. The floors are in this week, and the plumbing is all wrapped out. And all the materials, the plumbing and materials that have been ordered. Is this for the shed? The shed, yeah. Um, so that's where they stand right now. You know, you just expect obviously the April first opening of that shed is not going to make it. Um, so I do need to order a port potty or two. And actually, I have one here, location question mark, because I was going to ask you guys for some input because, you know, unfortunately, it gets really muddy where we usually put it. You know, they make a mess just for the month, so I don't know. Ideally, I put, like, I put it next to the shed, but I think the neighbors would be very upset, but I know the neighbor where the port pot usually goes is going to be upset when he sees them again, even though it's only a month. So I'm just going to let you... Like I said, we could put it back in the normal spot. Let me put it, we move it close to the street so the truck doesn't make a muddy mess going in. Right. That means it's closer to the front of his house. Um, he wanted to have it close to the baseball field, but that would cause even more of a mess because it's just too wet up there for the truck to pull in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, for one month, I'd rather see it right next to the shed, but that's a different area. <laughs> so, right. um, any input? I mean, I, don't, I could, it's only a month. As is, same, same like slot, just for Seems like leave it. Okay. Feels like that. Would okay. Days. I mean, it's uh, the least, yeah. I'll call Christian tomorrow and just say, I just, I need two back up there just for the month. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more. It might be a little, a little spread. So uh, uh, I'll get the call from Vince and I'll just tell him that it's only a month. What was the story? Um, with the plumbing's been wrapped up for a while. What was the story with the with the situation? They're waiting on the materials, right? Is that what it was? Is that why? The plumber. The They're waiting for the guy. Okay. So, so. that's all wrapped up. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So the matrix, you know, is the only thing that I asked Jeremy about again, because I know Tim and I were talking about it. He's lacrosse was looking for a lot more time this year. Um, so Jeremy asked for the backfield. He did find out from Matani today that, you know, that I wrote down here that Matani basically said I might have run my JV lacrosse teams back there for practices. So Jeremy might have to wait after five o'clock to get on the field, five, five or six to get in the back. So high that's high behind high school. Um, so, I mean, the matrix, Jeremy's okay with this, you know, because that was the, he's giving up time on Monday, you know, half the time on Monday that he had or half the time on Tuesday. Um, I did get, as you know, you know, tonight we talked about having the lights on for the youth groups, but we asked them to fight that fight. Um, we'll just reach out to Dave, you saw the email from Dave yesterday, and I had him call me. I said, Dave, that's something you and Jeremy have to, until we figure out what we're doing for our summer camp and school and usage. I said, that really, we shouldn't really be involved with, we can be, I mean, asking for the youth groups to have more time at, on school property. That makes sense? I mean, we could, but I guess up to up to an extent, but yeah. it, you know, it does, it, it directly impacts us because yeah. Milliken is, we, there were too many teams there's uh, too much usage for too little space. Yep. And the one space that we deal with is, you know, yep. essentially contiguous to what we're asking. Um, you know, it's I don't see why it can't come up. If we, are we doing this on Monday or what are we doing? I don't know. Okay. I think it'll be decided today. All right. Yeah, we can all bring up, you know, it's on yeah. my, my answer. Um, so, I mean, this is ready to go. It can be voted on, you know, because this is Milliken and Beachwood. You know, ready to go. So, if somebody wants to make a motion to approve yeah. this, yeah, I'll make the motion. Any seconds? Yeah, second. Second by Honeyman. Uh, so, the motion is to approve the um, uh, field matrix as presented as agreed upon by the two U, uh, the multiple U groups, and Breck uh, as presented here in the field. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Oh, uh, yeah, soccer lacrosse high school there. So I did, I mean, in my one thing that we learned, Tim, I think in our meeting was well, maybe it was in our meeting that high school did raise their fee to twenty dollars. They used to you, you, they tried to go hourly, which caused a lot of issues with you know, it was the soccer and across are gonna be paying thousands and thousands of dollars more. So they they went back and changed their user fee to twenty dollars per kid. We're 10. They never told us. And when I talked to Jerry, she's like, No, you were in the meeting. I was like, No, because we learned it that day that we had the meeting that they were charging 20. We still charge 10. And that's one reason I think we had a lot of you know, that came to us is and I told Jerry that they're all coming to, across one to all of our space because it's it's half the price. Um, so she, you know, so we that has something to consider for next year. I don't know if we want to go up or not, but um I want to share with you guys. So we, we can do that in the fall, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. There's no rush to do it now. I don't want. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give them good. Yeah, good we can't, once they're already into their season. Yeah, yeah. It's too yeah. Um, a couple of things that I just, you know, I just included. You know, I, I included the sign that's up at Millican right now. Um, we did this so we got community preservation money for the for the um for the fact we had all new black and white fencing installed along Bancroft Road and along Bancroft Way. And I'm, you know, want to make sure I get CPC credit for it. And we also gave a little history lesson on the on the field. So um, the one thing we were having problems with back in 2013 when this this came up was the amount of geese on the field, and it just was overwhelming. And the Robinses had their dog Garth the train to go out there. Oh, yeah, no geese. <laughs> go go chase them all. <laughs> So that's why, you know, since we were letting a dog try to get the geese off the field, we'd like, I, I, we made the sign that just said dogs are allowed, are not allowed when there's anything going on. Yeah. But that was to allow those dogs to monitor the geese off. Monitor what? Monitor those. Dogs are there all the time. Well, that's what, what we need a little site policy. The problem we have right now is they're just, and this is from youth groups, we just, we might add to that a little sign just saying they should be leashed. leashed. Um, and we also had a problem last year where a woman was up there with a dog, and the people that was coming along, and the crossball came within 50 feet of her dog, and she called me saying that they shouldn't come along, and she's up there with her dog. That's right. That's so, not so, the so, accurate. So, so I did go ask it. That's not very accurate. So I did talk to DPW. I said, you know, we should really put consider shutting the field down when you're coming along because that could happen. So, you know, we're thinking about getting a sign to say field closed and lawn. And the lawn's being cut. But um, I mean, some of the suggestions I have is, I mean, just that there are some, like when we have Frisbee up there, they have to understand that, you know, I just had to add a little sign saying, these are the dog laws. We, we appreciate your dogs keeping the animals off the field, but they have to be, they're not these. They're just, it's a, it's a um, hangout. Um, and also, you know, we do know that there's no, we have no conflict of dog messes, which is good. Um, you know, the dog, the mowing the lawn, obviously, with the tough people that stay off the lawn when they're, Trying to cut the lawn, but um, I mean, I just want to throw this out to you that you know, they so we have to really we might that go up there. I, might, I can go up there, I guess the same crew, they're always up there at the same time, and just say, Listen, you, you, know, you can't have them off leash, uh, so on the target part. Um, so I mean, that's something I just want to throw out to you. I mean, obviously, we do it, you know, we can probably do it with the whole the new field matrix thing. Um, the one thing I do want to ask you guys tonight is, and th we talked about this in the meeting, and you know, Steve wasn't there. But you know, just we've had a lot of complaints about it from the neighbors, from noise from one, parking from the other, uh, the, the way the field is maintained on the you know from a third neighbor. So I sort of want to, if it's okay with you guys, sort of have a policy. And one of the issues we have is you know everybody complains about soccer, but soccer is the only organization that does it right. They they have a parking plan, they do cones, they you know they actually, as I think Jeremy told us, she spends a lot of money. Yeah, you know, every exactly. Saturday getting paid for, for the to kids do it. Who want to do it. Yeah, you know, and then now lacrosse wants to use the field more. But the biggest issue we have is high school. If they have a baseball game, lacrosse, JV game, a, a test match, it's a zoo up there. And I know they they blocked Eric's driveway. You know, to, you know, if they don't do it right. So, I mean, I do want to develop a small, a quick policy. Um, well, you know, we already have some of this in place. And, you know, the one thing we don't have is that there have been changes between rotundi and soccer, soccer and lacrosse that don't include us, but they should. So I just want to put that in writing. Um, in our policy, it does say April 1st, but 
that we allow baseball because it's only nine cleats on the mm -hmm. field. Um, but I think it's important to bring up that it does sometimes doesn't open until mid April. Um, soccer and baseball all start after April gets school vacation because they know they can't they destroy the field. Um, but I do want to get a vote from you guys about um, the health of the neighborhood issues and police issues. Um, just a quick little policy, this little, this little neighborhood policy between neighborhood policy, neighborhood and police concerns and building update, where we just drafted this alleged all three organizations and Coon High School that, you know, any multi-game events, I'm trying to think of the best way to word that, um, should follow soccer protocols, parking plan, cones, uh, music in the PA, which I get, these are usually the first game, and then I have to call and say, you got to tone it down a little bit, because they're flashing, and they, you know, they're used to doing it on alumni, but they could, you know, it's a little too close to the neighbors when they do it in the shed, at the new shed. Um, and then my other thing is, and this always happens to us, the away buses come, and then they drop the kids off, and then they park, uh, what's the best way? Sideways. Yeah. And take up 12 to 15, you know, uh, I don't know how many spots that kind of takes up. So, I mean, the one thing that I want to stress to Rotundi is, <clears throat> and, you know, I just want to get your vote on it, is that the bus should park and leave, you know, drop the kids off and leave, and never, you know, just park there. Um, and then I was talking to Bernie Mulcahy today. I said, Bernie, if you, he actually never remembered driving to the field for a game of practice, he always walked from high school. But that's not the case anymore. Um, all the players, Including tennis players, I don't mind the coaches as much because I mean it's, it's only like two, you know, two where the baseball coaches won. Um, but I would like to see this, you know, tell Rotani that the players have to stay at the high school and just walk to the games. Uh, but I want the teeth of your the vote to just say that the rec board voted, and I mean it, it might take us a year to get them to do it, but um, I have a suggestion. Yeah. Make sure they will. Oh, I just got to send an email. It would just be an email. Because no, it's got to talk to him personally. If you want me to do it, I'll be glad. No, no, it's got to come from, it's got to be sent to all three organizations. But I mean, just that, I mean, it's just him telling the players they, they shouldn't, like, they're, they're parked there anyways. They just get dressed in the locker and then walk over. I mean, that's you guys have reservations on it. Well, you know who parks there is the juniors. But I'm talking in the afternoons. They can't park on the school, so they park up there. And by mid year, places fall because they all get the licenses. But that's not the issue. It's, a, it's actually after it's when the players and when the teams are coming and yeah, other teams are coming. I mean, sir, whatever you guys think. Um, I think I should just, yeah, just, just stay with it. Um, how do you want to play it? Do you want to just talk about the neighborhood concerns or do you want to um, adopt some policies as well from like kind of cross board? I think just because there's getting more and more neighborhood complaints about parking, I just, I just have to have lacrosse and high school follow or Tony Scott, <clears throat> uh, never Tony, uh, Jeremy said. Okay. Um, that they need to devise a parking plan. And we suggest, I mean, we could say the player should, the first off, the bus is easy. We just have to talk, you know, because that does happen almost once a week where the bus first parks right, right across. Yep. Um, I mean, whatever you guys want to do. What do we got? Okay, so let's have some discussion. Is there any discussion? Anybody um, uh, uh, opposed to doing um, largely what's right here, where it says neighborhood and police concerns, where we kind of adopt a policy that says for these multi-game events, uh, cohesive youth soccer protocols should be followed, uh, music and any any PA should be. Um, you know, neighborhood, reasonable neighborhood friendly, a neighborhood friendly, a neighbor friendly. And parking plan should should uh, or, or parking policy should be that the away buses drop and then park uh, for good between you know while the game is ongoing at the high school and um, any uh, cohesive participants walk over from the high school versus driving the car. So we would basically put this as a policy and actually say to the to the high school and to uh, the two youth groups that hey, Rec um, came up with this policy for the you know beginning this season going forward. This is our policy. Anybody on board with that or have anything to say about that? What I would say is it's just something you sit down with him 
personally, and I'd be glad to do that. And you talk about what we're asking. You look at these signs, things like that, and let him have a part of the decision making. And then he'll follow. If you tell him he's got to do it, we're in trouble. So that's what I'm suggesting. I don't mind sitting down with him and say, you know, these are the times we're going to put up. This is the cooperation we need. You need to let kids know, don't park up there. All the things we've done. Yeah, I'll be glad to do it. Derek, you're the you're the neighbor. What do you what do you? I know you didn't get a chance to see this, but actually, unless I said it to you, I forget. Um, yeah, you you did send it to me. I I mean I. I agree with with Jack that obviously bring bring more people into the fold to make them you know be part of the decision process. But um, I you know I like the bus policy personally, but that's 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 an abutter thing. I, I get blocked in my driveway by the buses. That's the only that's the only thing that bothers me. I mean the noise. I mean we get noise from the high school. I, I the noise is not a not an issue. I don't. But again, I, I'm one person. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean. <sighs> Looking long term at the plans for the the potential evolution of the fields and the tennis courts down the road, um, you know, in subsequent phases beyond phase one of, of what we're doing and knowing that even with, um, you know, the consultant parking and, and resolutions for parking are concerned starting to ease into some sort of idea of how to resolve some of the parking issues as, as a stepping stone might be a good thing long term as we you know like i said evolve the fields and the tennis courts but uh i mean i'm not opposed it all feels good to me i think doing it collaboratively makes sense i think my only comment and more just asking like just make sure that it has I don't want to say enough teeth where it's something like I just want to make sure that like there'd be a little more detail on like sort of what what we need them to say go as a youth soccer for the public like, or just make, I, it, yeah, make it easy ask, for them to follow. I could ask Jeremy for his because he's got a whole plan in place because he yeah. had to because the police were all over him because uh, he had so many kids up there on Saturdays. And I know you don't want to be so rigid to say exactly what neighbors should be considered on music. I, I know you don't yeah. want to be too rigid, but at the same time, like just sometimes. Yeah, you know, and I think it's the reason I keep bringing it up because I know I've got one in my eye. Is that you say these are our issues? How can we hope to solve them? Here's some ideas we have. He may say, "Well, here's what we can do with this. Or here's what we can do with that. Listen to it, and then it'll get, it'll get done." Yeah. If you tell them this is what you're doing, you're in trouble. Yeah, I think the biggest issue we have this year is not Florida. Yeah, well, the biggest issue we have this year is all it's lacrosse is moving on the field to us, so they're going to be. Jumping to go to field of five, and it's going to be hundreds of cars waiting to for the baseball game to end, and there's going to be no parking, and that's the problem. Well, the cross and soccer are all jumping and not, you know, mil using Millican to its max, waiting for as we talked about. You know, the cross won't jump on the field at three thirty. We remind him that uh, well, high school's on to five. Right. But Tony actually worked out seven thirty on, on his permit right. uh, for late games for baseball. Um, so we, I think we got Jerry knows that Jerry, I think was. Eye opening for Dave McConnell. Yeah. To realize that there's going to be days that he's got a lacrosse game where he might not get on the field if it's a late baseball game. Well, so, luckily not games, right? Practices. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, makeups, yeah. So I just love smoking and golf being in the same sex. Yeah. There's two <laughs> golf ones. Advice. No, they're equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the smoking. equivalency of putting it in the same sentence. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we'll work on that. Um, I'll ask Jeremy for his, what his plan is. Yeah, because then what we can do is we can take it to, we can go and talk to Steve and, and uh, like we'll take it uh, when, whenever this meeting about where we're going to yeah. have uh, yeah. the playground, <laughs> we'll take that and be like, okay, part two. Yeah. Here's the policy that we need for, you know, we, we like to impose a Milliken. Can you help us work this in? You know, for, you know, chief among it, you know, I think if we leave with the buses, that's a no brainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a no brainer. Because yeah. like everybody agrees, this is insane. What is this moron doing putting his eight, 80 foot bus across 12 spaces? Yeah. Like, get out of there. Yeah. You know, I mean, anybody can figure it out. Yeah. I can't just sit here. I need to go somewhere else. Yeah. And there's an empty parking lot. <laughs> like five feet away. Oh, yeah. Get down, make a right, make a left. You're in. Yeah, especially that time because the bus, you know, the kids are out, out of school. 
And, yep. and the, the kids who were parking right. there the other day are gone. Right. From Milligan, Bancroft. Right. That's why I think it's easy. Yeah. That, that's easy. I did it a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I said, oh, we can't tell you. We're going to take it over to the school. Yeah. So, we <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we'll table that until we can discuss it. Yep. Yes. So that leads us to the next step, um, but there's no resolution. I, I, I put on here a vote just in case. Um, I know, Allison, are you watching the school committee meeting? Are they discussing us at all? Not yet. They have a lot to go through. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, for those who don't know, I mean, they might, it was, you know, Chris Sr. told us that they might be wiping out the Oscar and Deer Hill this summer for paving and street and sidewalks. Um, the bids came in at 1.2 million. They have 1.5, but they also had other projects they want to get done this year too. So um, I'm hoping it gets discussed tonight because we obviously are through registration in less than 11 days and we really can't, our staffing, whole staff and hierarchy from this top down. Our goal, I mean, we, we put a permit for the high school, but you know, they are meeting, they're supposed to meet yesterday and they push it back because they don't know what's going on, but they had concerns. For us being fire and all the full day kids from Oscar to well, Oscar to Dare Hill and the kids that were in our office, right? Full day kids are going to go to high school. The high five kids were going to move from the Oscar back to our location. Um, they had concerns. Um, so, obviously, my concern is that they could right, hit us with a custodial fee, rental fee. And now it's, if we find out Monday, you know, that's six days before registration. Right. Um, any sort of restrictions on space or numbers, as we discussed, mm -hmm. where we have 125 parents of high five children that have missed all the registrations for other camps at this point. So if we are told that, you know, we can't take all the full day kids at high school, six days before registration, the high five, you know, we have to move the blue kids down to our office and the entire kids go all the kids going to kindergarten would not have a camp okay. and they missed everything already. Other, other programs. So, I mean, we're hoping, I mean, I think we have school committee people in the program. We have capital budget people in the program. So we have actually have selectmen kids in our program. So um, I think, I don't think they could, you know, we said, you know, Tom, we have to, we have to do it. Of course, if they decide that they can't do the Oscar J. Hill this year, then we'll just revert back to the way we did last year. Um, I, I am concerned that you know, because I know the high school alarm system is being done and there's a chance that they can't be anybody in the building if they can't override the two systems. Install a new one while well, the old system is active. They can't be anybody, anybody in the building is what I was told. Um, so I just don't want to lose all three campuses next time because that would, we have no place to go. Um, and it's also a discussion about our space after if Pleasant Street doesn't go through a town meeting in June. So there's a lot of ifs. You got anything else to add to Tim? No, just you know the the foot dragging and the the delaying is is you know not optimal for us no. at all. So some resolution from um, you know I don't I, I'm still kind of confused as to who has has the uh, the decision making uh, responsibility for who greenlights this. We're we're doing the driveways at the Deer Hill and the, and the Oscar. Like, I'm assuming it's the school committee, but I don't know that the school committee has any control of the stabilization of that. I don't know that. I don't, I don't know the answer. I think it's the town, yeah. but I don't know that. Um, but if it's the school committee, then great. They can make both decisions. Yes, we can fund it. And yes, this is what we can fund. Yeah. So, and you assume that would probably, they probably want to get on that now yeah it's on the agenda right now so hopefully you know could be decided tonight i hope so decision um, would be great um you know the superintendent's leaving so that doesn't help and i think so. you know if we go if we go the um if it, if it does let, let's say it's a it's a you know whatever a hybrid let's say oh um they're going to start it on uh august 15th and they're going to get it done in two weeks great we'll just do what we did or we'll start at august 1 and yeah. get it done in three weeks well, we'll make do for the last week. Yeah. We'll we'll just figure out a way. Yeah. So we'll just we'll be as flexible as we yeah. can be. But we need help, right? We need help from the high school. 
and so we just let's all pull on this rope together. Yeah, yeah. I was actually asked that yesterday about you know start the high school and go back or start there and go to the high school. Ideally, I say we keep in the same spot because it's just the, right. the logistics are a little scary. Um, the setup and all like that. So, so hopefully, you know, they might make a decision tonight. So. To give you a little bit of hope, everything else has a red line right through it, all the other requests. So are you watching it right now? I just could see the PowerPoint. Is the parking lot still on the No, they're just first getting rid of positions, supplies, but nothing is being approved. So there's no spending. Um yeah, so other than that, I mean, so poor Pat. We didn't, we didn't just. So going, I mean, so next step is rec fair. Um, you know, we looked at the list today of our vendors versus the state of like the number of tables we have. And we were a little shocked at how many vendors we have compared to tables. And, oh no, we have no tables. It's a, like, we know exactly how many tables could fit from one hallway to the next, the next, the next one in the gym. Yeah. Like we know it, we know that number and we're about 12 over, but we can, we know we can stuff more tables in the, the gym and cafeteria. Um, you know, we have, I, I gave you the list, this is the most up to date list right now. Um, so I've asked Linda Fector is taking care of the farmer's market people. Uh, Michaela Pickerton, who is our, is a regional public health nurse. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse and, uh, so like Mary Goodwin's retiring next month. So she asked Michaela to oh, take yeah. on the yeah, take yeah. on this. They're having a thing for at the at the light meters. It's a surprise. <laughs> you don't watch it. Um so bless you. So the, then we, you know, we're we're pretty packed too. We um we have to stop. I mean, I do have to, we can't take any more. Um we're trying to reach out to like we know some of these people like National Grid and NAFTA 111 gave us a box of supply to get out. Um, we know that great coffee, the uh, coffee place, Lady Sunshine will be outside. Um, yes. So we're, so we're, um, I reached out to Michaela and Linda today saying, listen, okay, we're, we're ahead, but who, who's, who's going outside? <laughs> I need to know like who's, who some of these vendors are, like farmers market vendors that might have a truck and try to have them use their truck outside. You know, if it's a nice day, like like Lady Sunshine and um, launch, uh, social launch has a food truck. Um, but no, we're we just gotta get the people there. So I know I, the street, the your, I think the dump is on our side. That's the rec fair. I've got to ask Bernie to say we've got a sign up there. Um, the two, the Story Street and town downtown, I guess switch from stickers to us. Hopefully right now, because they're just gonna advertise the online starting this week. Um, we have the yard signs, but they say Sunday. So I, on Monday morning, I'll get nine yard signs all over town. Um, yeah, so now it's just getting people there. Um, you know, I'm hoping for 50, 1,500 you know, people through the door. So um, we'll start posting things on Facebook, highlighting the different organizations showing up. Um, we have a great you know, lineup of um, you know, Jim Armstrong with his musician, uh, musicians, uh, explosion dance, psycho cheerleaders, and actually the volleyball team is going to do a little demo, some little short demo, whatever it's called, a little saucer ones that they can do without knocking about too much. Um, but um, yeah, no, it's a great group. It's just trying to get everybody in and trying to get a big, you know, as many spectators as possible um, to the door. So that's that's ready to go, and then of course registration starts at four thirty. You know, so we've worked through the little. We're doing tests over and over again, like last year we had a little T-shirt snafu, but that's actually no longer. It's like it's asked ahead of time. Um, so people are pre-registering. They're doing the the pre-registration paperwork, the photo, musician record. We are still. I, I think on Saturday I ran a test, and only two hundred or six hundred people have done it. Uh, so I sent out a text message saying, "Listen, don't wait till the last minute because they we're gonna we'll fill." Uh, that one. Oh, we got a need for help. Yeah. Who would you like? I just swear, man. 
Yeah. And what's that note you both? Well, actually, we have. I every, mean, I already reminded about this. Similar yeah. for uh, extreme, same thing. You'll be pre registering. Well, uh, that's all done. Oh, it is. Extreme is strong. Uh, biggest year ever. Um, we're still open. You know, we still, we took 96 spots. We still, you know, we, we were at 96. We won week 130. Uh, we have two weeks there. We have 60. That's that extra week through at the end, which might be a big vacation week. Yeah. And then the big vacation week in August. So we have like a weeks, we have weeks six and eight have 60. We're going to we cut it off there. So we just go, go to one box because we when you have that gap there, the gap between 60 and 80, we actually lose money because you, you have to fully staff it. Um, yeah. So Extreme was sold out in three and a half minutes. Yeah. So that was, that was fully done. Um, you know, beach stickers are going on sale the only time publicly you can buy them. You know, of course, they're pushing it to be online more. Um, what else is there? Yeah, I mean, Michaela's actually got some really cool. I, I'm having, trying to get Michaela to write up some of the stuff. Like Boston Children's Hospital is coming with the two very special programs that they've never written. You know, she knows them from doing other expos, but you know, they, they've got some pretty cool stuff coming. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, just you guys come along. We, um, I don't know how many National Honor Society kids we have, so we're going to be using some of our staff to help break down the tables and chairs um, Friday afternoon and Sunday afternoon. Um, but that's it for the fair. And then I did include, you know, Michaela had a little fundraiser at our, like, our location back in February uh, for Rare Disease Day. So we actually had her just, uh, she sent us a little thank you. You know, so they, they did tie-dye days, uh, tie-dye shirts for, I forget how many kids they actually had to do it, but they're, they're, they're nice crowd. Awesome. Yeah. So then I included the Kids Clubhouse, which is Friday, the last um, fundraising effort for the, the, the CHS Guatemala kids. Right? Yeah. Uh, so we actually, it was a little slow early, early in the week, but then it bounced up. We've got over 25 kids heading to 30. Uh, we have half day tomorrow. We got you know 40 most kids ever in our in our rise program for half day program. We actually because we have so much staff. And then we actually do a home alone class tomorrow and a babysitting class on Friday. So it's a busy week. Um, and the other thing we did, Jen is on vacation this week, and with Ryan's help, we got the brochure of the printer yesterday. Um, so our goal was to try to this is going to go out in the mail, hopefully. Monday, Monday after the fair, but Dave Burke is going to try to get us, you know, some copies, sign our copies for the rec fair, so people get a, you know, come to the fair, we'll get a heads, quick look at it. Um, that includes pretty much all our spring and summer programming, uh, from the outdoor basketball program starting in May, our safe voting classes, which are here um, in April, May, and June. Um, after school programming, the beach volleyball we do in the in the summer. And then we have um, a page here of stuff that happens after our camp's over, well, children's summer. That's pretty much everything that happens between August 9th to when school starts. And the last day of the camp is then August 9th. 9th. Yeah, okay. Extreme goes a week later. Uh, and then they'll be at, at our office, but on the road most of the time, because we do have a couple of new programs. We're introducing Knuckle Bones and this. Um, Robo think and both those companies are going to be the rec fair promoting their, their week with us. Um, summer dance is going on. Don't know if it's going to be downtown or with us, but we'll, find, we'll figure, we'll squeeze them in. Um, community partners, we do this, you know, the time being child care in June. The clothing, we're hosting a clothing exchange April 27th to 28th. At the same time, the Art Earth Day people reached out to us and want to host, want to. Us to be this location mm -hmm. for Earth Day. It's that time, I think it was Town Hall. So Connie after our reached out and said, you know, you have clothing exchange. Why don't we just, you know, it'd be great. Yeah. I said, you know, if it's raining, I think we just come inside the first floor. Yeah. And clothing exchange be upstairs. So it'll be a nice little, awesome. a, a big day for us that day. Um, you know, we included some of the things regarding Safe Harbor. And we do have um, the Harbor study on the brochure here. Uh, <laughs> With the correct, this is the good lake there uh, that they sent us in time. And I noticed it was downstairs when you walk in, but they're going to be at their rec fair too, you know, pushing this, this survey. Um, and then the rec center and rise is on the next page. 
and just sort of a I booked six concerts right now, but I'll probably might add one or two at the end. Uh, so hopefully the uh, the Southern Voice I booked her six years ago. So between illnesses, COVID, rain, 110 degrees, I'm hoping this concert that was originally booked in 2018 finally happens. Um, we're going to line up downstairs just in case because I can't. She's coming to Connecticut. Um, so I really, really, really have to get this concert done this year. Um, and we'll probably have two more concerts after that. Hopefully, by then, our seven month project of putting the new stairs in, make it down to the chairs you might want to use, so uh, will be done. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only concert we're going to do is that's just the Russian Skippers. And I make the Russian Skippers bring their own chairs now. Oh, you do? It's too much work. Oh, okay. Uh, with 30, uh, I think that's up to 45 people now, the Russian Skippers. So. We let them rehearse at the, our office on Tuesday nights in summer on the deal that he brings his own chairs for his concert with us. Oh, so, okay. But they're a short hand, they can always borrow, you know, go yeah. there. But, so this is this is Dave Burke has us now. Um, printing it, hopefully he drops it off next Friday. We'll get it all ready for the post office for Monday and we'll have copies with us. We'll put them each, each all the vendors will get a copy of this, we'll have some at the front door. Um, we haven't really figured out any, any giveaways. We used to always do giveaways, but um, we are pushing the Coast Guard got 500 kayak stickers. And, you know, so when people lose their kayak, they, the police and target master know who's missing or who they need to contact. I did find out that they they do, there are the stickers are on the boats usually when they find them. They just, nobody wrote, no, nobody wrote who, who their kayak yeah. belongs to. Uh, so I did ask Oscar with the Coast Guard. I said, Oscar, yeah, when you give them sticker out, can you have some permanent markers and make sure they put the names on yeah. uh, So that way they can get a hold of them. Um, yeah, you know, in May we'll have the kids, we'll do again with the, uh, the only, we don't have any Boy Scout projects, but we have um, Charlie Lacco is doing the youth sports, plus he's also a big hand, he's doing a lot of help with the rec fair. Um, and then Jack McSweeney's gonna bring, uh, bring him back too this year. He, he did about 30 hours at Rise. Um, early in the year, he just finished up. He's actually working a little bit before baseball starts. And then we have um, Brooks Kennedy and Drew Gibson. And I'm sorry to put this in the packet, but they're within the next couple of weeks, they're going to start putting turf around Story Street because right now, just with the month, it's just the grass can't grow where the patches are. And then we spend all every summer, it's either mud or dust. So that with, with Mr. Kennedy's help, the, this turf, everything around the basketball could be turfed. So that way the bench, you know, that it won't be so messy up there, up there. Um, so we'll bring the four boys. So we'll have the four boys come in May. Give them a little thank you um, for that. So we are interviewing kids right now. Um, we are required to interview everybody this year. So we're trying to do a, uh, we're interviewing new kids. We had a bunch two Saturdays ago. We got some tomorrow night. We have a whole bunch coming to the rec fair. You know, Emily and Zoe would just be it's probably the teacher drum at the office but with their help doing interviews all day because we have a lot of kids. Uh, we are gonna probably do a group interview with all the returning kids and just sort of have like a bonding, how can I be a better counselor? We're trying to work out some kind of little plan that you know counsel the interview. But it just we have not had kids that applied for jobs. And we probably interview all of them was was a little tough. Um we have with Allison's help, she's gonna I do. We have we have five people apply for the psychologist, a mental health person. Uh, we do have a woman that has been with us for three years that we applied, but so Allison's going to help me narrow it down to three, and we're going to interview the other two or three, those the top three, including yeah. Linda, who's returning. Um, and then we were we had one nurse apply, and she bailed on us about an hour before the interview, but then just two, I think Monday after Monday morning, we got a a, a new resume. From a girl that's graduating just from Regis College in May, and a lot of background, a lot of, you know, Mary Goodman. So she, it's a, she reminds me, she actually, like a couple steps above the kids that we've had before, like when we had our first nurse, which was, um, she had just graduated. So it's good, you know, great for her. Yeah. Um, I talked to her yesterday for like a half hour, and it just, it's a like great that she loves the summer, she loves the, being outdoors. Um, I don't, and just um, has, because of COVID, she's got a lot of certifications. <laughs> uh, because she probably did them well. She, you know, well, yeah. she, you know, was stuck at home. And, um, it was very impressive list of certifications. But I realized I joke with her because someone never like school in London, and 
he never went. It just got certified during yeah. probably during yeah. COVID. But um, yeah. she's in that stage now where she's. I was worried because are you available the whole summer? And she's yes, because she's in that stage where she's going to apply for all of her professional certifications. So she'll graduate in, in June, uh, in May. And so maybe we'll start right by June and get kids ready for prep. So I'm going to recommend, I think Mary's going to meet with her too. And then we're going to recommend that she get hired. So that's always our, the one little spot that we always, it's hard to find. So and she actually said she might be available next summer. So it'd be nice to have hire someone that can be with us for one-on-one -on -one summer. Um, and we also have Michaela and Chris and Eason as backups. They were with us for last year and both have offered to help in when they're filling for a day or filling a field trip days. But, you know, we're just waiting to wait and see right now. So hopefully, anything new, Allison? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, wait and see how we things. We're supposed to have a meeting Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, but I think a lot depends on what they decide tonight. So. I think that's all I have. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, I think Derek said goodbye. So I think he's all <laughs> so He might be. Is he, uh, is he there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm still here. Sorry, here. still driving. <laughs> all right, nice. I was looking for participants. Oh, that's because that's the chat. Mm -hmm. um, there you are. Hey, anything on the harbor? Any uh, information on the survey or anything else? Uh, no, I think uh, Ted covered it just as it pertains to this group. It's it's just distributing it far and wide. Really want to get uh, as much input as po possible on uh, harbor recreation. So uh, hopefully everybody got the survey or, you know, has the QR code and, and can, you know, add their input. Okay. Uh, John, anything on open space? Yeah, I mean, just quickly, so um they're excited about the director, obviously, coming to that. Um, the, I think our day is set for April 27th. I think they have to still go and kind of do the, you know, submit the permit person and all that other thing, but April 27th. Um, so that'll be good. Um, Adam's working on his plastic bottle water ban. Uh, and uh, so you may see petitions floating around. Uh, he's trying to get those all submitted by March 20th. And um, that's pretty much it. We have a special guest coming next to the next one. Um, Charlotte Echel. That sounds familiar to anybody. Somebody's coming. No, it's my Pia's. She has on sustainability projects and grants. So there you go. All right. Awesome. Um, Allison, anything on Safe Harbor? She did just say that they're discussing our project right now. Oh, that's <laughs> you, want play, you want to do play by play? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I don't have any update on Safe Harbor. So what, uh, where are they right now? Are they school committee? They're just going through now some of these outside, um, outside of the building costs. Not lying. Not lying. Um, and what's put off until next year are the roads from Pond Street that needs to be resurfaced, replacing the sidewalk and curbing, and the extended sidewalk to Pond Street at the middle high school. With the exception of some that they had turned. The other one is still on right now, but they haven't discussed what they're doing with it yet. And it does not include anything think. to do with, just so people know, anything to do with the. Um, any proposal of any bus parking lot that hasn't been talked about that, that does not exist. Right now, not for us, it doesn't, but it's, it's you know, I if you know it's one. I'll listen, I'll, I'll keep you posted. I don't know that. I, I don't. This is only what I said. Okay. Thank so, you. So, I don't know. Julie's not in, so there's no sidewalk safety update, but. All right, so I think that is where we stand. Anybody have anything else to talk about? I don't think we have anything. Right? I think that's it. We just, you know, it's kind of wait and see on a few things. Yep. Wait and see on the projects, wait and see on our, our policy, and wait and see on where we're going to have the song. Yep. So, okay, that's where we are. All right, so we'll adjourn now. Actually, sorry, I need a motion to adjourn.
So moved. Okay, Jack moves. Second, seconded. And all those in favor? Wait a minute. You must take candy with you. Must take candy with you.